Welcome to the Strategic Families Podcast, where we challenge families to be rooted in God's Word, energized with gospel-centered purpose, and activated on mission for His kingdom. What's up, everybody? Graham Clark here. Welcome to another episode of the Strategic Families Podcast. This is episode 1.07. You guys are in for a treat today. We've got my buddy Jeff Green on the show, and Jeff is just an awesome guy. He and his wife, Diana, have four awesome kids. We got to know them a few years back when we were doing a homeschool co-op together. He and Diana are just so intentional and purposeful in their parenting. You know, on the show, we try to have perspective from those who have faithfully run the race of parenting, but it's also great to have folks on the show who are right in the middle with us. And that's where Jeff and Diane are in their journey. So they're with us in the challenges and the struggles, and they're just great examples for us to follow. So here we go. Enjoy. I am pumped to introduce our guest today, Mr. Jeff Green. Jeff, welcome to the podcast. All right. Hey, Graham. Good to be here. Jeff, like I mentioned to you, uh, you definitely fall in the category of guys that I know a little bit and would like to know a lot better. You are on my top five list. So I'm really looking forward to this discussion, learning more about you and about your family and what you guys are doing on Mission for the Lord. So um, before we get into all that, though, let's get into a little background. Tell us uh, about your family and where you live and what you do for a living. Yeah, so my wife, Diana, and I have been married for 11 years. We live in the university area of Charlotte, and uh, we have four kids, one boy, three girls. The ages range from nine to five years old, so they're all kind of packed there together. And uh, I work within the energy industry, specifically doing research and development for nuclear power plants. Uh, that that fund my company, uh, EPRI, E-P-R-I. So uh, I love what I do, and uh, it's good to be here. Awesome. Yeah, you you guys have what I like to call a high kid density ratio. Yep. Got, them, yep. got them packed in. That's the way to That's do true. it. That's awesome. <laughs> so, Jeff, you know, the reason that I wanted to bring you on as much as anything was to talk about your core values. I remember you guys invited us to your house and I walked in and I saw these values posted up on your wall. And I thought, man, that is so cool. So tell us about, well, first of all, what are core values? And then tell us how you came to arrive at the core values that you guys have in your home. Sure. I mean, yeah, different words get thrown around for for what we've done or something similar, you could have a mission statement, a, um, you know, uh, or core values like we have. But basically, to me, these are like the, the traits that, that above all else, we would like to serve as the backbone for our family related to how we prioritize things, how we raise our kids, evaluate the commitments that we make. So there, I think of them as like a common language that we can speak about and center our activities, our actions, and our relationships around. Um, so for us, you know, that's, that's a, a list of seven different values that, that we speak about. And, and as you mentioned, are kind of publicly displayed there in our, our main family room. I love what you said about a common language. That, that is a fantastic way to think about it. So these words, each one of these words or concepts has a meaning and everyone in your family, I mean, at age, you know, age dependent ways, understands yeah. what those mean and you can reinforce them. So tell us what are the ones that you guys decided on and how you arrived at each of them and what they mean to you? Yeah, sure. So just to list them out, they, Start with the first one being that we're Christ-centered. Second, that we show respect. And I'll go through them kind of quickly here and we can go into more detail. But uh, after we show respect, we engage in service. We're open and honest with each other. We strive for good health. We honor commitments and practice stewardship. So those are the, the seven values. And then with that goes you know, kind of a, a Bible verse that we tie to each of those along with a, a longer explanation. If you want, we can get into that. 
I would actually love to get into that because uh, if I know you guys, like I think I do, these were not just words that you <laughs> pulled out of a hat or out of a cup. These are things that have deep meaning to you and Diana and something that you have said. Yeah, we're, as you mentioned earlier, we want to make sure that we reinforce these with our kids and that we that we live by these. So, yeah, if you would, maybe just quickly talk us through. And I'd, I'd love if you have those Bible verses handy, just tell us yeah. how you arrived at each each one of those and, you know, how they they are grounded in Scripture. OK, the first one that I mentioned is being Christ centered. I think that would you know, for many people that would say, OK, yeah, that, that kind of makes sense. You know, above all else, you know, who are we? Who are we trying to model ourselves and, you know, our family uh, against? And that is the example that Christ set, set for us. And, and so our main verse with that is actually an Old Testament verse, Deuteronomy 6, 4. Pretty common verse there. But basically, the, the hero Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul and your strength. And, and I mean, he even goes on to talking about taking what you've learned and, and impressing it on your children. Right. So, you know, that stood out to us as something good for just that first uh, value that we wanted to have. From there, uh, the the next one was showing respect um, and pretty straightforward there in terms of what that means. Um, some things that, that we kind of, that go along with that are obviously like teaching um, manners. We kind of had a, uh, uh, use this as a buzzword for relationships between the, our, the siblings, especially as they were younger. You know, this idea of like, you need to learn conflict resolution and above all, you need to show respect to not only us, but your brother or sisters. The verse that goes with that is Proverbs 13, 13. And uh, that one just mentioned that whoever scorns instruction will pay for it, but whoever respects a command is rewarded. And the teaching of the wise is a fountain of life, turning a person from the snares of death. That was the verse that, that goes along with that one. The next one, which I'm sure we'll get into later when we talk about safe families, is engaging in service. And so for this, it, you know, service to us is something important in figuring out ways that we can serve as a family, which is why safe families was so appealing and attractive to us, where we could incorporate like everyone, me, Diana, the kids, serving together and, and figuring out ways to do that. Obviously, that changes as your kids age and, you know, what's appropriate, maybe when they're early is nursing home serve days, things like that. Later on, it's, you know, serving at crisis assistance ministry or second harvest food bank, packing food up for that. So that, that obviously changes over time, but, but the uh, verse there is Galatians 5, 13, uh, which is uh, you, my brothers and sisters were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge in the flesh, rather serve one another humbly in love. And then it basically goes on to give the, you know, the, the main command that Jesus uh, said, which was love your neighbor as yourself, right? Along with uh, loving God. The fourth one, being open and honest with each other. You know, with, with this one, it is, uh, as you'd expect, teaching honesty, of course, but also being open with each other, you know, so it, it's getting into like emotions and, you know, being willing to share. Uh, we're hoping that Putting the time in now, focusing on this will help when our kids are in those what can be trying teenage years of, you know, somewhat wanting to distance uh, themselves from their parents, maybe. So uh, <laughs> the verse of this was 1 John 3.18, which is a simple one, but a profound one. And that is, dear children, let us not love with words and speech, but with actions and in truth. Mm. The fifth one is striving for good health. Diana and I always joke about this one. Uh, you know, for me, I, I love to exercise. It's a big part of my life. And, uh, but this one is more than just physical health. It's about emotional health, mental health, spiritual health. So it's more broader than just, you know, make sure you're eating good things and exercising, taking care of yourself, right? In all those different ways, as well as spiritually too. The verse that we settled on this was 1 Corinthians 6, 19, which is, uh, do you not know your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you and who you, you have received from God? The sixth one was honoring commitments. And uh, this, uh, I felt strongly about having something in there where, you know, if we are committed to something or we make a commitment, we stick to it. And sometimes that's not going to be what we may want to do. 
So as you would expect, the verse that goes with this, James 5, 12, which says, above all, my brothers and sisters, do not swear not by heaven or earth or by anything else. All you need to say is simply yes or no to your commitments. The last one is stewardship. And so this one is relates to finances, of course, but also considering expenses and activities, where are we spending our time and energy? Is that good? Are we being good stewards of what we've, if God has given us to, to care for? The verse with this is 1 Peter 4.10. So that one says, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. And I do have one addendum on these seven that I just wanted to point out. And that is that, you know, with these, for me, being more of an achiever mindset and, okay, you know, if we make sure we're doing these and review them regularly and it will be set as a family. But on top of all this, and this was Diana's idea, was an anchor verse for our family. So regardless of what we're doing or how well we're doing, meeting those core values, our anchor verse here is Ephesians 2.8, which is that you know, first by grace, you've been saved through faith. And this is not of yourself, but a gift from God, not by works so no one can boast. So this idea that at the end, it is grace that saves us and not our works or how, how closely we align with those core values. Man, that is so awesome. I, I love all of those and I love your reasoning behind it, your commitment to have those grounded in the word. I mean, it is, that is awesome. And I love how it, you know, as you and I talked about before we started, it, this is not just about the Greens being a better family. I mean, of course, it will have that effect when we focus on God's word and on the principles that he's laid out in scripture. But it's also allows your family to be better strengthened, better equipped to serve and love those around you and to advance the kingdom of God. That's really just so special. And I, I love that you guys spent the time that you did on them. And that that kind of leads into my next question, which, you know, I know for you guys that these are not, you know, this is not just something that you and Diana sat down and said, well, that would be nice. Well, why don't we put it on the wall and then it'll look pretty up on the wall. I mean, this has real impact in your family. So I wonder if you could talk about how you reinforce them. How, how do they come up in conversation and how do you guys use the, to bring God's word to bear in your children's lives and to advance the kingdom? So I think the first thing, well, you're right. It took us, I think we we said about a, a year to finally kind of narrow these down after an initial exercise that we went through, like a mentoring program through our church with our senior pastor. So it definitely took time to to, to finally figure out, okay, yeah, these, these make sense. And it was just as we were getting going, starting our family and everything. Uh, in terms of how we, you know, what this looks like in terms of applying them to shaping our family. They are yeah, very visible in that main room of our house. So uh, to the point where if we're having dinner together as a family, like they're right there. So if something comes up or there's, you know, we're always near, in or around the kitchen, right? Multiple times a day. And so, um, you know, anything that, that comes up, we're all, we're trying to tie it back to those, some, some either examples or reinforcing those values with the kids in our daily discussions with them. For Diane and I too, you know, we, the last year or so, we've gotten a lot better about having regular family meetings. And I realized for parents with one or two or three-year-olds, like family meeting is not going to go very well. Our kids are finally at that point where they can sit still for, you know, at least 30 minutes to kind of look back on the week, talk about highlights, lowlights, what are they anticipating or excited for in the next week? and set goals, you know, weekly goals kind of thing. So reinforcing them during that, those meetings too, it's just part of the constant dialogue at, at home, or at least we, we try to make it so that, again, going back to why we have those, they are, you know, really there to kind of develop or build that common language that we speak within the family. And for us, these are like the main things. If we get these right with our kids you know, by the time they're young adults, we're hoping though there will be a good bedrock for them to hopefully start their own families on. Man, that's fantastic. What you guys have done is just so in line with what we want to encourage all families to do, anyone who's listening to this podcast, and that is 
to really be intentional with how you want to raise your kids and what kinds of things you want to teach them in their home. And our source for wisdom is the word of God. And uh, as I mentioned, I love that you guys have grounded all of these in God's word. So you can bring God's word to bear in simple, but really powerful terms for your kids. And you guys are being so strategic about it. If I'm picking up what you're laying down, you're saying though, that toddlers would not be able to stick to an agenda, a family meeting agenda. Is that right? Mm, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've all been there. Our, our five-year-old even kind of struggles to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, making it but yeah, that, that I word that you use are intentional. I mean, that is so key to, you know, just thinking about how do you want to parent, you know, what do you want to look like as a family? Everything kind of circles around that word and just being intentional. Yep. That's right. And Jeff, I don't know if I ever told you this, but you guys, I think we're, we're probably the instigation for us thinking through core values and our family too. And um, it took us a, a couple of years after we saw yours and we did some coursework sort of like you guys did. And it, it took a lot of work to sit down and say, yeah. well, what are the most important things by the time our kids leave our home? What do we want to make sure we have faithfully communicated and not just communicated, but embodied to them and, yeah. and actually lived out in our home. And it took a while to get down to like, well, that's a good concept, but is that a core value? If we don't, have that is that a problem or not that's eh, not a problem well then it's not a core value but if we yeah. don't have it and it is a problem that's a core value you know and yeah. uh, so we've got our own posted and and you guys were an inspiration so thank you so much for that oh, yeah. i, I want to transition a little bit because i know the green family is all about family adventures i love that yeah. you guys do family adventures and i wonder if you can talk about some of the adventures that you guys have been on. I know at one point you were talking about doing an adventure a month. I know that can look a lot of different ways. Can you tell us, what do you guys do together? Because I think a lot of times, you know, we, if you've got little kids, especially, you just kind of think, well, you know, kids, they can't really, you know, they're especially if they're little, they can't really do much. And, uh, and I'm sure you guys have found ways to sort of defy that and, and do really fun, but also meaningful things together as a family. So share about that. Yeah, yeah. The yeah, the idea of some kind of regular family adventures where you're getting away from just the uh, daily routine are just important, valuable. The phrase here that I always like to think back to, and again, this is from our senior pastor, but the idea that through quantity of time comes quality time. And it just it's those things where you, if you're on, you know, some kind of weekend getaway, camping somewhere, you know, it just uh, Oftentimes, I find it just kind of strikes you out of the blue of like, man, this is really rich time that we're having here. The game of cards or, you know, playing catch or, you know, running around. I've, I've found that to be the case <laughs> with these adventures. You know, it hasn't proved me wrong yet. So you're right. Uh, we, I have a reminder that comes up. I'm sure several of us like to use our calendars, right, for just these reminders to check in. So I have a rem reminder that comes up every month asking me, have I thought ahead to the next month? Have I put something on the calendar for a family adventure? And uh, I mean, for us, so this uh, Friday coming up here in a few days, we're actually starting a, a week long trip up to Annapolis, Maryland, down to Colonial Williamsburg and Jamestown over to Monticello to see Thomas Jefferson's uh, house and, and meeting up with some friends along the way. But uh you know, for, so for us, that, that's kind of our, our monthly adventure, a few adventures packed in there, actually. They really don't have to be that, you know, involved. They, you don't even have to leave Charlotte or even leave your house, but also be something like a, a hike, like a destination hike. You know, for, for us here, Stone Mountain is a, is a good one that's like an hour and a half away um, up north or uh, even just taking like blocking off that time at work to, to take the family out to defy gravity or something nearby, like a, a local event, just something that gets you out of the, the normal routine. And again, through that quantity of time comes those quality moments uh, as a family. Man, I couldn't agree more. I think that is so wise. It, a lot of times we think, or we assume, well, I'm, I want to have quality time. So I'm going to schedule it. And uh -huh. it's our quality time is going to be, Thursday night from 6 to 9 p.m. And we know kids yeah. don't work that way. There's not a formula yeah. where we can say, well, it's going to happen then. 
it i love how you put that that it comes out of quantity time yeah. it's gonna it's gonna hit you at times that you didn't expect it and that's one of the beautiful things about it so spending mm -hmm. that quantity time is uh is so critical if we want the quality time so i love that mm -hmm. man I hope you guys have a great time in your trip. That's going to be, that's yeah, going to be a blast. I know, I know you're no stranger to this as well. I mean, you know, we, we were inspired with your guys' idea of like the family day, right? Where you mm, yep. really focus on an entire day, like an agenda around, here's what we as a family are going to do completely dedicated to, you know, no distractions and yep. really putting yep. some, going back to the I word, intentional aspects to that day in uh to make it really something memorable for the family. We uh, have copied that idea from you. Yeah, that's great. Mutual encouragement. Yeah, I think you know, we started to think it's like, you know, we celebrate a lot of things in our culture. Family's worth celebrating. It's worth making a big deal out. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm really glad you guys have adopted that. Okay, so transition now. I also know, in yep. addition to adventures, uh, when I asked you, we sat around your table, I said, how did you guys meet? And then you and Diana proceeded to tell us about dancing, which I know is a really big deal uh, to you guys. So I wonder if you could just talk about how that, uh, I know that's a huge part of your and Diana's story. Can you talk about yeah. how dancing has been important for the Green family in general? Yeah. Uh, you know, going back to how we met, I, I always like to joke that Di Diana and I met at a bar, which is true. <laughs> it was Arthur's Bar and Grill in Omaha, Nebraska. And it was Latin night. So there's a Thursday nights were Latin nights at <laughs> Arthur's. And um, yeah, we met, she was still uh, taking a social dancing class as part of her college curriculum. And uh, she was there as part of, I don't know if this is like the final exam or whatever, but sure enough, she ran into me, um, Mr. Suave on the dance floor. And um, apparently she noticed my shoes first, my dance shoes. Um, so, <laughs> uh, anyway, and she knew this guy is legit. He's got dance yeah. shoes. <laughs> we so yeah, we we have been dancing ever since. Uh, obviously, it's slowed down a little bit with kids, for sure. And you know, for us, it's still important. It's still kind of a shared hobby that we have. So we'll. This is obviously pre-COVID, and hopefully post-COVID, we'll there'll be social dances, swing dances, Latin dances that we can go to just on our date nights. Now, in terms of teaching the kids, we do plan on doing that. We haven't, you know, yet gotten into really, you know, trying to pass that skill on to them. But it is such a, it, you know, for me, I mean, I absolutely love this idea of like mixing, uh, being active with listening to good music to, you know, socializing there's just so many aspects to dancing that are uh, make it a, a fun and uh useful waterfall hobby yeah and i know that is coming i know those girls will be dancing with their dad at daddy daughter dances that's what i know oh yeah oh yeah but yeah and you might remember this but we've got that in common too because katie and i met at a country line dancing place back in 2006 <laughs> so that's my yeah, that's yeah. my claim to fame uh, <laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned a little bit of this, Jeff, but I'd like to talk about your travel because I know yeah. your work requires you to travel, maybe not as much over COVID, but I also know yeah. you guys have been really creative in how you've been able to incorporate that into your family. It's not just, you know, dad's got to travel and that's hard on the family, which, you know, it pretty much always is or, or normally yeah. is. And you guys have found a way to be creative. So can you talk about that and just how you guys have worked that out in your family? Yeah, for us, me traveling for work is has been a net positive and for the family. And I feel like Diana would agree with that. Uh, we have visited places that I or we would have never thought to go just on our own or, or even have the desire uh, or ability financially to visit uh, if my work didn't bring me there. So there's been places nearby within striking distance. Think of Knoxville, Asheville, Richmond, Atlanta, where we've been able to turn those into either a weekend getaway on the back end of a, of a work trip, or, you know, while I'm working, the kids are out at the, at the beach or whatever. Um, <laughs> so there's also the, the bigger trips, like uh, we've been down to Florida a few times for work, 
so there's obviously like the memories that we can piggyback on top of that work trip for the family. I will also say for Diana and I, we have been very intentional about every year doing a, just the two of us get away. So, you know, just, and that is just as important for sure, being able to spend time with your spouse. Uh, so there is some further destinations that we have been to just the two of us where I've had my parents come down and, and or her parents to watch the kids as part of a work trip. So she gets a break. And then as part of that trip, we also get to you know explore a new city and, and be able to take that in and make some memories uh, just as a couple. Because at some point, it's just going to be the two of us again, right? <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's uh, fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, I love I love how strategic you guys have been with that. And I love that you said it's a net positive. Uh, uh, it doesn't mean every aspect of it is easy, but what you're saying is on the whole, it's a yeah. good thing. You guys have made it work. And again, this, like we talked about being intentional, it takes some sitting down and thinking like, yeah, we're going to do this as a family. I stretch us a little bit, but like you guys are doing it. Yeah. So that is awesome. Yeah. I love it. Now I wanted to circle back on something you had mentioned earlier about safe families. I know a little bit about the ministry, but I'd love for you to share more up with our listeners what Safe Families is, how you guys got involved with it, and just what the okay. Lord has done through your family and so many other families that have that have uh, stepped in on this ministry. Okay, yeah. To put it simply, and I'll go into a little bit more detail, but a very quick overview of the mission of Safe Families. It is preventive care for families in crisis. So preventive care for families in crisis. How we got into it, as I explained a little bit more, is we had always talked about being open to fostering or adoption and even started to go down the road of doing the training required to become a foster family, which which is, you know, no, that, that is some in-depth training for sure. And it's a commitment. During that process, we learned about safe families, which it is basically it's a it's a less formal agreement where as a family, you agree to take on, you know, typically a, a younger child, anywhere from uh, infant up to the probably elementary, middle school range, or siblings, where, where the family is in crisis. And so what you typically see would be like a single mom who has lost her job, not able to pay the rent, um, you know, just facing a health crisis, and uh, are fleeing from some kind of domestic violence type situation. And so she just, typically she just needs a month or two months of the ability to like work on getting stable again, finding good housing, safe housing. And uh, during that time, we as the host family will watch the child or children for that individual while he or she gets back on their feet and is able to take the kids back on. So it's, again, it's not the like formal, the it's not, it doesn't involve the county intervening and, you know, you know, saying, no, you like this child needs to go to foster care. It's much more of like a come alongside and support typically the, the single mom while she gets on her feet and, but you're watching the, the child or children during that time, they're spending the night or, you know, part of the family. So yeah, that, that's an initial intro. If you want to go into it further, we, we can go into more details. We've been doing that the last two years. We've served about five different children, two of which we've gotten very close and had multiple visits with. And ultimately, it winds up being you come alongside the, the, the mom in this in both of these cases. And, you know, even after the initial arrangement is done, like we're still meeting with them regularly. We actually right now have one of them staying in our basement for a, a longer period of time while she's working on getting financially independent again. So it's, it's been definitely game changing in terms of going back to our core values, serving, right. Being good stewards of what we have, you know, being Christ centered, right. Loving, loving uh, our neighbors as ourselves, all of those fit into this model of safe families. That's amazing. What an awesome ministry. And I love that you guys are embodying what it means to love, not just with words, but in deeds and in truth. And uh, it's, it's really just so remarkable. I would love to know what it's meant for your family and how you guys have grown through that, because I think that 
in the body of Christ that we grow the most when we're in service together. You know, it's one thing to say we need to serve and God calls us to serve yeah. um, and we should do that. And yeah, we should do that. And it's another thing to actually start serving and making sacrifices. And I think there is so much blessing that we can miss if we only think about, well, you know, that's going to involve sacrifice. And I'm not sure if I want to do that. And I think what you guys have exemplified is no, like that's God's right in there in the middle of it. And he works and he moves and it is so thrilling to see God at work. That doesn't mean it's all easy. Of course, there are lots of hard moments. I'm sure you guys have experienced that, but can you talk about what has it meant for your kids and in, in terms of, of, of this service and this sacrifice? Yeah. If you compare this to what we were doing before this, which I mentioned a little bit earlier with the kids being the ages they were, doing a Saturday morning nursing home serve day, which is good. I mean, you know, you got maybe an hour and a half, two hours, you're, you're helping out with the, with folks that are, you know, that probably don't see a lot of younger kids. And so putting smiles on their faces and everything like that. But like, this has certainly been uh, next level in terms of really showing that service is a core value in what it means, uh, because it is, you know, d- depending on, on the, the children that come in, they're, they're coming from oftentimes traumatic type situations. And so, you know, it's, uh, it's not only can be a challenging for, for the adults uh, that are part of it, but just like for us seeing our kids in even before getting involved in this, talking with them about what we were doing and that we really needed to do this as a family because they get brought into, you know, that, that child who's reacting or, you know, doesn't know how to react to, uh, hasn't been growing up alongside them and learning the importance of respect and, um, you know, being uh, open and honest and all those other things that we, we really treasure in our family and just pointing out, you know, figuring out ways to point out to the children of like, what you did there was, I really appreciated that it was very mature. I know it must've been difficult for you to, you know, share that or go out of your way to help pick up that mess or, you know, just care for a, a screaming toddler or whatever the case may be. But it really, I think has shown them what service means other than just like, okay, well, we can, we can schedule these activities, but in this case it is 24 seven, you're immersed in it for, for however long the case may be. And yeah, there are certainly, there's certainly good moments and there's other moments that you're just in the trenches trying to make it to the next day. And, and our kids have been there with us and, and uh, you know, we've tried to make, make it a point that this is a thing we're doing as a family for sure. And that's fantastic. And you, one point I think that you guys are showing in a way is that, you know, and we hear this a lot It's service. Sometimes we think of service as like, we need to, you know, spend a lot of money and go to another country and get a bunch of flights and it's going to be stressful getting there. And I think what you guys are showing is, man, the Lord, you know, part of being a good steward, you guys have determined part of being a good steward with your home is opening up your home and serving the Lord that way. And I love that you are doing an awesome long-term service for the Lord right in your home and treating your home like it's his because it is his. And yeah. um, I just love that, man. That's such an encouragement. I know that's going to be an encouragement to everybody. So thank you. I, yeah. The last thing I would say to here for folks that are interested in, in safe families, and it's, it's, uh, I think it's, uh, I'm just, let me just pull up here on, on the website. It's safe dash families.org. If you want more information, I mean, we are huge fans of it. The nice thing about it, I mentioned foster care and foster care is good in its own right. Safe Families is nice because it much lower, lower price of entry, I guess, is what I want to get it like. The, the training commitments are less. You know, you, you don't have to be registered. It's, it's again, much more of a, of a relationship as opposed to a qualification when it comes to like being a foster family. So it's more of the relationship partnering with that parenting crisis to get them through whatever, you know, month or a few weeks to, to get back on their feet and, and then uh, coming alongside them. So that makes sense. And I, I love that safe families 
at least part of their goal is to say, well, if we can keep kids out of the foster system and reunify them as soon as possible, sometimes it, it might just be a week. It might be two weeks, three weeks. And to think of a parent being able to keep their child if they only just had a little bit of transition. And I know a lot of these, a lot of these folks that, that you're serving, they don't have family relationships as right. easily or either right. at all or not as easily as some of the rest of us. And so you guys are providing that sort of family and doing it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is so fantastic. <laughs> I'm so excited to hear you talk about that and to see what the Lord is doing through you, through you guys. Yep. There. So thank you for being such an encouragement in that way. Yeah. Okay, so you've already shared a ton of scripture with us. I don't know if anything else comes to mind, but I always love to ask guests, what are some scriptures that you think, man, we try to live by this as parents, and this really grounds our parenting. Does anything come to mind? The, yeah, there was, the, like, we have the scripture verses for each of the, those seven core values, but I would just go back to that Ephesians 2 8 verse, just the idea of grace in that as you know, we need grace just as much as in our role as parents. You know, it's not going to always be pretty. We're not always going to get it right. But, you know, just I think realizing that that's ultimately it's it's that grace that comes in. And, and we're given that if we uh, turn our eyes to, to God and, and recognize that he can give us that grace. And oftentimes that uh, wisdom that we need as parents uh, to make it through, you know, whatever situations we may come across absolutely so important are there any books or other resources that you and diana have leaned on over the years that have influenced your parenting uh there's three that that come to mind for me and diana uh parenting by the book by john roseman uh, is a good one uh, it gets into like the idea of biblical parenting, like, like we've been discussing here. Um, just the book with the title Parenting by Paul Tripp um, is another really good one. It's got like 14 gospel principles related to parenting that, that he uh, lays out in that book, which, which are good. And then the last one is Shepherding Your Child's Heart by Ted Tripp. And that's probably more for younger children, but uh, Shepherding Your Child's Heart by Ted Tripp, I think was Paul's father. Um, there were the three that, in my mind, were kind of the most influential for us in uh, shaping our, our vision, our values. Excellent. Yeah, that's great. I, I know uh, Katie has read At Least Parenting uh, by Paul Tripp. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure she's read Shepherding Your Child's Heart and uh, maybe even the other one, too. I remember one of the books that Paul Tripp makes in parenting that we think of all the time is this idea of the long conversation. And it comes to mind, you know, I think before your kids start, you know, relating to you, you think, well, I can have this conversation. I'll tell them and then they'll know and then I'll be done with it. And, you know, we know that parenting doesn't work that way. It's a long no. conversation. It is, mm -hmm. it's, you have the conversation once, and you think they get it and, you know, then six months <laughs> later and, you know, two years later and it's, it's, it takes 18 years. It's an 18 year training program. So, um, yep. yeah, those are, I, those are all fantastic authors, great suggestions for books. I need to get on it and start reading some of these books myself, but myself, <laughs> but sometimes I feel like I've read them because Katie tells me about them and uh, uh -huh. sort of absorb it by osmosis, but thank you for those suggestions. Okay, so the last thing, Jeff, that we always try to do is a challenge. You know, it, yeah. it's easy for people, especially, I know I do this all the time. I'll listen to a podcast and I think, man, great point. That's awesome. Well, wow, fantastic. And then shut it off and then, you know, nothing really changes. And I wonder if there's something, if, if you could encourage, especially young parents, kids are growing up, what's one thing you would say, you know what, you can take this baby step right now and start to be more intentional and strategic with your family. Yeah. What comes to mind for you? First thing that comes to mind is a habit. And it is actually not about parenting. It's more about your relationship with your spouse. So it is the idea of just setting up a regular date night uh, with your spouse to talk about or think about these things. For us, we call it Saturday. Uh, Sushi Saturdays. Uh, so uh, every Saturday for the last, 
six or seven years, Diana, you know, if nothing else is going on, we're not traveling, we will make a point to right nowadays the kids are old enough where they can watch a movie and and put themselves to bed on Saturday nights, but we will take those two hours, three hours to I'll go out, pick up sushi. Uh, we'll have, you know, kind of a candlelit dinner and uh, we kind of have a rhythm to that uh, built in of, you know, what do we want to cover? Kind of like our family meeting I mentioned. Um, I'm sure you guys have one too, where you kind of go through, all right, well, you know, how'd the week go? Encouragements for each other, problems or challenges that we're facing. What do things look like? So there's some business, there's more celebration. There's, you know, just growing together as a couple for sure in setting that up regularly uh, along with, I mentioned the yearly getaways, we've really prioritized those no matter what age the kids were. Sometimes a few of those, we were wound up taking babies along with us. But if I had to say one thing that I feel like has really helped us through the years in our parenting, it's been that moment during the week because they don't come around very often. <laughs> you got to set aside just maybe an hour or two to just, talk about how things are going and um, where you want to go and just these more like longer term, maybe review the core values uh, if you have time for that and, and also do it in a fun way that it will help kind of ingrain that habit of, oh yeah, looking forward to our Saturday sushi night or, or whatever the case may be. So that, that would be one thing I would say to even for very young parents, parents that even, well, you know, uh, married couples that don't even have kids yet get that habit going of uh, meeting regularly to talk about those things. Awesome. Awesome suggestion. Yeah, that reminds me of I've heard it said and I believe it that that one of the best things that we can do for our kids is, as, as dads and husbands is to love their mom well and show them how valuable and 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 what a treasure she is and yeah, they will find security in knowing that that relationship is vibrant and protected and valued and yeah. honored. So that is awesome that you guys do that. I'm I'm going to try to lobby for French Fry Friday. Let's see if I can oh that. yeah, that's, okay. the poor, <laughs> that's the poor man's version. <laughs> uh, uh, Waffle Fry Wednesday. Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> awesome. Well, Jeff, this has been uh, this has been a treat, man. Thank you so much for um, just your encouragement and your your challenge, and just what you guys are doing for the kingdom. It's just been such a privilege to learn from you, and I know this will encourage a lot of people. So, thank you so much. I hope so. Thanks for having me. See, I told you, Jeff is a really cool guy. Jeff, thank you so much for sharing your story and just how you guys go about life. It's a beautiful thing. What a great encouragement to those of us who are in the same boat. We can do this. Let's do it, guys. Let's take some of what Jeff taught us and put it into practice over the next couple of weeks for God's glory and for His kingdom. Check us out on strategicfamilies.com. Hope to see you there and make sure to tune in next week. We've got my sister-in-law, Amy Ray Frank, who's got a really cool perspective on how we can do ministry right within our homes. We'll see you then.